Hello everyone. Once again, this is Kevin Anand, Eagle Strong Voice. It's September 17th and I'm speaking to you from the free territory of the Republic of Canada, formerly the so-called Dominion of Canada, now under common law jurisdiction. Well, I have once again a very important announcement. Historic news. Following up on our law, national law that was passed, outlawing COVID regulations all across Canada. That was on September 8th. Now, we've let 10 days pass. We've given the government and health officials honorable time to do the right thing and to pull back from these unhealthy, unwarranted and illegal measures. They haven't responded. So under common law, our next stage is to declare them to be rogue, unlawful actors. They're in default of a public lawful notice. And now they can be arrested on site because they're a threat to the public safety. But we're going to take this to a higher level. If they do not immediately cease and desist from all COVID measures, we're giving them to the end of the month, September 30th. But if by that date, they have not ceased these ridiculous, unlawful measures, we will commence, starting October 1st, 2020, a national massive civil disobedience and non-cooperation movement across Canada, embracing many groups. That resistance movement will allow people to take a pledge of resistance publicly against the Canadian government and its agencies. We will not pay taxes. We will not vote. We will not obey Canadian laws of any kind, not just the masking and the distancing, but any of these laws, because they are coming out of a criminal body. We're going to commence that next Monday, September 21st, with the first of a weekly series of events called Unmasking Day. Every Monday, we're going to strip the masks off ourselves and our loved ones, and burn them in a public bonfire outside legislatures and closed courts of law. Also, we're going to urge people to take that pledge publicly and to join the local common law assembly that are sprouting up now in over 100 communities across Canada, taking back the power into that community, issuing lawful orders from that, and also urging people to take out citizenship in the Republic of Canada. You can do that by writing to republicofcanada at gmail.com or their website, Republic of Canada. It's very important to solidify yourself that way by standing outside the Crown jurisdiction altogether in the new nation of Canada. Now, in that struggle, the declaration of non-cooperation, we have unexpected allies, even those right within the system. The other day, the Ontario Civil Liberties Association declared masking illegal and unhealthy and urged Canadians to engage in a campaign of peaceful, civil disobedience, that is, not to wear the masks. Now, the Ontario Civil Liberties Association is an arm of the Ontario government. It's set up and funded by the Attorney General's office. So here's one aspect of the system, one branch of the government, fighting with the other, saying that we shouldn't be doing these things. So we're already beginning to see these splits develop in the system. Their backs are to the wall, and they're very afraid of our example of common law assemblies, because we're not simply protesting which just dissipates energy and that doesn't create anything. We're not simply protesting or talking about the problem. We are setting up new government, uh, governance at a local level, public assemblies that can issue their own laws and enforce their own laws. In other words, we've declared government and the corporate backers irrelevant. We are the power now. So not surprisingly, the usual kind of smear campaigns have begun generated against me and this movement. It's been going on for over 25 years, but significantly, we had an insider come to us the other day and describe how this campaign is being funded and organized right out of E-Division office of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Vancouver. Inspector Peter Montague, Montague, who traditionally led this campaign against our work, has passed this on. He's retired now to wherever RCMP uh, hoodlums go. But they are now funding groups like so-called Unify the People and others to resurrect these smear campaigns and tactics against me personally and others who are involved in this campaign against genocidal acts, like we are seeing now imposed on all of us, not just Indians anymore, but all of us. So we can expect more attacks, more divide and conquer tactics, but that's only a sign of how successful we're being. They would ignore us if we weren't having an impact. This is proof that we are moving mountains once again. Now, just to recap, the government of Canada and its agencies have until September 30th to stand down from all measures related to the imposing of masking, distancing, quarantining, mandatory vaccinations, and the rest of the corporate criminal agenda. If after September 30th they haven't done that, 
Starting October 1st, we will commence a national campaign, non-cooperation and civil disobedience to finally take back power into our own hands. This will include the arrest of known perpetrators of crimes against humanity by our Republic common law sheriffs. We urge people to join or form the local common law assembly. You can learn more by writing to Council of Assemblies at ProtonMail.com. Each one of you must take this action, must carry this on. We are beginning to win. The scales are beginning to tip in our favor. We cannot start fighting among each other or believing lies and smears about me or anybody else. That is the only method they have left, fear and lies. Do not allow yourself to be divided or separated from this sacred historic movement. Write to republicofcanada at gmail.com. Learn more. Listen every Sunday, bbsradio.com. Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern, on that station for the Voice of the Republic and the Resistance. We'll have more updates very soon. This is Kevin Annett, Eagle Strong Voice. I thank you.